Amen. How many of you are glad to have Jason Robertson back in Louisiana? Amen. Man, I'm super excited to have him here and excited about what God's going to do at uh, Milldale Baptist Church under his leadership. Uh, you know, there's another group of Robertsons up in the Monroe area that have this thing called Duck Commander. Well, I think Jason and I are going to start a ministry called Faith Commander. Amen? We got Phil Robertson and we got Jace Robertson, right? And, um, and we'll just lift up and glorify God. Amen? I, uh, it's interesting at my house because we get uh, phone calls uh, quite frequently, um, people trying to reach Phil Robertson, the Duck Commander. And uh, I think because I'm the closest person in the phone book to... Uh, to Monroe, they end up calling my house. In fact, we were in Washington, D.C. this past summer, and uh, we had set up to, to do a tour at the uh, Library of Congress. And um, it was set up through the senator's office and all of that through a friend of mine. And uh, the powers that be in Washington sent him an email and said, Hey, we just need to confirm that the Phil Robertson family in your party is the, the Duck Dynasty folks because... The, the, uh, the officials at Library of Congress have set up extra security uh, for your party. And um, so, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a quite interesting, but um, I'm just thankful to uh, be a part. Not only am I a Robertson, but I'm a Christian. Amen? A child of God, a son of the King of the Most High. I, I want to just share with you a few thoughts this morning on the subject of he didn't throw the clay away. And I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Hosea. Hosea. And we're going to look just briefly in chapter 1 and then chapter 3. And this is that incredible picture in the Word of God where we see evidence of the fact that our God loves us and pursues us. Amen? And that uh, He is never going to throw the clay away. It is a... Cinderella story, S-I-N, Cinderella story, demonstrating God's incredible love and what Jesus did for us in our redemption. And in the book of Hosea, beginning uh, in chapter 1, verse 2, it says, When the Lord began to speak by Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go take yourself a wife of harlotry and children of harlotry, for the land has committed great harlotry by departing from the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of the blame. And then turn over to chapter 3, verse 1. And then the Lord said to me, said to Hosea, Go again, love a woman who is loved by a lover and is committing adultery, just like the love of the Lord for the children of Israel who look to other gods and love the raisin cakes of the pagans. So I bought her for myself. Amen? Aren't you glad of that? Aren't you glad that the Lord Jesus today says, What know you not? Your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. You are not your own. You have been bought with a price. And the Lord says, I bought her. Uh, uh, Hosea said, I bought her for myself for 15 shekels of silver and one and one half homers of barley. And I said to her, you shall stay with me many days. Folks, that's the heart of God towards you and I. You shall stay with me for many days. You shall not play the harlot, nor shall you have a man. And thus I will also be toward you, for the children of Israel shall abide many days. The Lord does not throw the clay away. Whenever I got saved and whenever you got saved, we essentially said, I do, to Jesus. And Jesus, when He died on the cross, was essentially saying to us, will you marry me? And in that relationship, we see for the very first time in Scripture, as far as I can tell, we see where God specifically uses the metaphor of marriage to illustrate the relationship that He has with you and I. And he calls the prophet, Hosea, and he says, basically, you're not just going to preach a sermon, you're going to become a sermon. You're going to be a living sermon. And so God instructs him to go and take a wife, but not just any wife. I thought about Hosea. 
He's young. He, he's a, he's a young a, a, a preacher for God. He's committed. He's faithful uh, to the Lord. And no doubt he had been thinking about a wife. Amen. I mean, he, he, wanted, a, he wanted to get married. He, he wanted to have a wife. And all of a sudden, God speaks to him one day. And God says, Hosea, it's time for you to go get a wife. And I can see Hosea saying, all right, man, this is it. I get to, I get to take a wife. But then the Lord says, I want you to go marry a prostitute. The preacher marrying a prostitute? I mean, it, could that really be God? Maybe Hosea was probably thinking, I don't know, is this the devil or is this God? But it was, in fact, the Lord. And the Lord was basically saying to him, I'm going to use your life and your relationship to illustrate how much I love my people and how desperately I want them to love me. I think about Hosea whenever uh, he was contemplating this. I mean, Gomer was not just a former prostitute. She was a bona fide card-carrying prostitute. Amen? I mean, and, and, and she was living in harlotry. And, and there was an ongoing lifestyle of sexual immorality. She was not worthy of Hosea's love. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not worthy to be the bride of Christ. I was never worthy for Jesus to come to me as an 11-year-old boy and say, Son, would you marry me? Till death do us part, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, I will. I'm not worthy of that. Hosea, Gomer was not worthy of that, of that relationship. I can see Hosea basically driving down to New Orleans. And he is wrestling with this. And, and he, he, he gets to the French Quarter, specifically Bourbon Street. And he's being directed by the Holy Spirit. Now this isn't in the Bible, but just use your sanctified imagination, okay? The Bible doesn't tell us specifically how he proposed to Gomer but maybe it went something like this. And, and he gets down there, and he's in the French Quarter. He's on Bourbon Street. He's a little uncomfortable with all the bars and the strip clubs. And as he's walking along, he spots a, a young lady kind of standing on the corner of Bourbon in a back alley. Oh, she looks like a prostitute. She's got the four-inch high stiletto heels. She's got the mini skirt. You know the look. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit says to him, that's her. She's the one. His heart begins to race. His hands begin to sweat. And so he walks up to her and approaches her. She thinks he's a customer. So she starts to inform him of her fees. And he says, oh, no, no, listen. How about just a cup of coffee? And so they go and they sit down and they begin to have a cup of coffee. And Hosea looked at her and he didn't see necessarily a process a prostitute, he saw a beautiful young lady who God loved. And God was giving him a love for her as well. And as they began to talk, Gomer began to see in him a, an unconditional love for her. And, and, and she knew that she didn't deserve him. She didn't, she didn't deserve to marry a guy like him. And, and, and all of a sudden, I, I can just imagine tears beginning to stream down her face and and, and Hosea says, Gomer, will you marry me? And obviously at some point, she says, yes. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about redemption and what it means to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, we have to understand that there's three requirements. Number one, there has to be a purchase. There, the, and, and Gomer was the purchase because you get over to chapter 3 and you realize that, that she had in her a propensity to go back to her old ways. She in, in, inevitably turned back to her old lifestyle. Even after marrying Hosea, even after experiencing all the life that he could give her and the love that he could give her and the blessings that he could give her, she still turned back to her old ways. Why is it that oftentimes it's in the blessings of our life that we drift farthest away from God? Why is that? I'm often reminded in the passage in the book of Romans that says, let the goodness of God lead us to repentance. 
She drifted back to her old ways, and, 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 and now she's, she's, she's left the home, and she's basically kind of sold herself as a slave. She's back into uh, prostitution, and, and, and the Lord speaks to Hosea, and He says, don't throw the clay away. He says, go again. Love a woman who is loved by a lover and is committing adultery. And notice this, just like the love of the Lord for the children of Israel. You see, the primary message of the book of Hosea is God's relentless pursuit and love for His bride because He's not willing to throw the clay away. And Folks, I'm so grateful for that. Because what I have found is that I have that same propensity in my nature, in my human flesh, to be drawn and pulled to the world and the flesh and the devil. And before we get too quick to criticize Gomer, we better take a careful look at ourselves because you and I prostitute ourselves against our God, our bridegroom all the time. We cheat on God. The book of James says, uh, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. But yet God relentlessly pursues us, but we oftentimes commit spiritual adultery against the One who loves us and the One who's blessed us and the One who gives us all gifts from above. We prostitute our time. We prostitute our treasure. We prostitute our talents. The Bible says that she looked to other gods. The nation of Israel was looking to other gods and loved the raisin cakes of the pagans. It was in time of idolatry. And you know what idolatry is, right? An idol in our lives is anything that's more important to us than God. Folks, listen, we're not worthy to be the bride of Christ. We weren't worthy for the price that He paid to purchase us and to redeem us. And we have within us a propensity to, 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 for our minds and our hearts to, to wander and look to other gods. But God relentlessly pursues us. In the, Rev, in the book to the church at Ephesus, Jesus said to the church at Ephesus, I have this one thing against you. You've left your first love. You remember, men, what it was like to chase after your wife before you got married? I mean, to pursue her, right? I mean, you, you, you wanted to be with her all the time. You thought about her constantly. You couldn't get her off of your mind. I mean, listen, you, you, you would give up opening day of hunting season if you could just be with her. You would open her door for her on a date, but then you get married and something happens and Sometimes if you're not careful and you don't flame the fires of, those lo- of that love, you begin to drift apart and, and then all of a sudden you're 30 years into that marriage and you know before when you would come home from work, she had spent an hour dolling herself up. I mean, she was waiting for you to come home and she had supper cooked and she had, she had fixed her hair and she'd put that ruby red lipstick on ready to give you a big kiss. Welcome home kiss when you came in the door. You would stop by the flower shop and get her some flowers. It was the honeymoon. You were in love. 30 years later, you come home. She's at the sink, curlers in her hair. You say, honey, I'm home. Yeah, come on in. What's for supper? Well, you can warm up some of those turnip greens in the refrigerator if you want to. Wheel of Fortune's about to come on. Instead of taking her out on a date and whining and dining her, now you go to Walmart for date night. Amen. But don't you remember what it was like to to love her and to pursue her and to chase after her. And that's what the book of Hosea is all about. It's reminding us that our God loves us with that kind of a love. And He pursues us and He chases after us. It also reminds us of the seriousness of sin. Because sin is serious. And folks, cheating is serious. Do you not know today that God is a jealous God? And when you read chapter 2, you see how God begins to deal with the sin. And, and, and you know, 
God in the Scripture condemns divorce, but it's almost as if you read Hosea chapter 2, and it's almost as if God's ready to divorce His people. We say divorce never, murder maybe. But how does God feel? We're prostituting our time with other gods and our, te- our treasure and our talents. And we left our first love. And, you know, listen, ladies and gentlemen, when God pursued us, He didn't pursue us just so that we could have religion. He pursued us so that we could have a relationship. That's what God desires. He desires a relationship with us, a, a reciprocal love. It's God loving us because He is love. And, and, and we love Him because He first loved us. And, and there's this marriage relationship that exists between us and our Savior and our Lord. And, 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 and when we sin and when we, when we look to other idols in our lives, It's like cheating on God, and sin not only breaks God's law, it breaks God's heart. I'm sure there were times when Hosea said, you know what, forget it. It's not worth it. She's not worth it. But Then God comes along and He says, go get her. Go love her. Just like I love my people who are committing adultery. She wasn't worthy. We're not worthy. Especially of the price that Jesus paid to buy us. You've got to have a purchase, but you've got to have a buyer. And Hosea was the one. He, he, she, he was her husband. And she, he was going to, to buy her back to himself. And, 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 and I can imagine how that Hosea was potentially struggling and but he knew the heart of God and he knew his heart and he wanted her back. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming love. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. And so God says to Hosea, go and show your love to your wife again though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress. There's nothing that Gomer did to deserve that kind of love. And she didn't go back looking for Hosea. Hosea went looking for her. And folks, isn't it that always the way it is with God and us? When you read the Bible, it's it, even from the very beginning with Adam and Eve, it's God pursuing Adam and Eve. And then you get all the way to the end of the Bible, and it's God pursuing the nations. And everywhere in between, the Bible is not a story about our pursuit of God. It's a story of God's pursuit of us. His, His incredible love that He has for you and me, unconditional. And He's just saying, listen... Turn away from your sins and just love me. That's that's my heart today. It's to just say to you and I, let's just love Jesus. Let's love Jesus more than we love anything else. And let's make sure that, that not only does Jesus know how much we love Him, but let's make sure everybody else knows how much we love Him. I not only want my wife to know how much I love her, but I want everybody else to know how much I love her. And so Jesus, He pursued us and and purchased us. And Brother Bill talked about it last night. The compassion that caused Him to, to, to pursue us by leaving heaven and coming to earth and being born in a manger and, 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 and being uh, 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 stricken and beaten at the hands of wicked men. All that Jesus did. You know why He did that? Because God so loved you that He gave His only begotten Son. It was all based on love. and He was willing to pay the price to not throw the clay away. Hosea paid 15 shekels of silver. Jesus paid a far higher price than that. He gave His life. He who knew no sin became sin for us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ loved us and died for us. It was an outrageous price that Jesus paid upon the cross. And and, and He is the one who has redeemed us and has bought us back. Even when we didn't deserve it. That incredible price. 
when we're saved, we don't have to be slaves to sin anymore. And, 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 and Hosea, he redeems Gomer out of that situation and, and bestows his unconditional love upon her. Galatians 4, 4 and 5, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Titus 2.13, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us, that He might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for Himself His own special people, zealous for good works. You see, ladies and gentlemen, God has, has paid the price for us to redeem us so that not only would we be redeemed, but we would be purified. To purify for Himself a, a special people, zealous for good works. 1 Peter 1.18, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without spot and without blemish. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ redeemed us not with silver and gold. He redeemed us with His precious blood. Dark is the stain that we cannot hide. What can avail to wash it away? Look, there is flowing a crimson tide. Whiter than snow you may be today. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all our sin. We're not worthy to be called the bride of Christ. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die, would He devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? But even though I'm not worthy, I know He loves me. And He's pursuing me with that unconditional love. And He that has begun a good work in me will be faithful to complete it until the day of His appearing. And He will not throw the clay away. I'll close just sharing a quick little testimony. If you were here last Labor Day, you heard it. A testimony from a real-life prostitute, Miss Iris Blue, was a lady who spent a number of years of her life in prostitution. She said in her testimony that she had always had a complex growing up because she was always a, a big girl, tall, and she thought herself to be ugly. In elementary school, she said the teachers would raise their hands and ask her for permission to go to the bathroom. She ran away from home when she was 13 years old and she said in one weekend I did everything I thought I would never do in my life. Drugs, alcohol, all kinds of sexual immorality. She was in and out of mental hospitals. She went to prison for armed robbery. She says when I was in prison I'd get in fights just because somebody would say something to me like, good morning, having a good day. And she said I'd deck them. They thought solitary confinement would break her, but she loved it because she said in solitary confinement she could daydream and she'd pretend that men would fall at her feet because she was so attractive. And she said men had fallen at her feet before, but it wasn't because she was attractive, it's because she'd punched them. She wanted to be a lady. She said, I wanted to be special, not to everybody, but just to somebody. She met Jesus outside of a topless bar. She was skinny and strung out. A young Christian man who had befriended her and was trying to witness to her had told her that night, I can't see you anymore because he said, I'm not going to hang, hang around with tramps. She said, you could have cut my throat and it wouldn't have hurt my feelings. But she said, when he called me a tramp, it hurt a tramp. You know what a tramp is. Garbage. You put it on the corner and garbage men take it away. And she started crying. And he started crying. And he said, Iris, you don't understand. Jesus can take a tramp like you and make a lady 
And she said, I want that. And they knelt down and he said, now Iris, you've got to understand that receiving Jesus, you become part of the bride. And he said, Iris, it's not just about Jesus saying, I do to you. It's not just about you getting all that Jesus can give you. You've got to say, I do to Jesus. And you've got to give your all back to Him. In her testimony, she said that night she knelt and she said, I do to Jesus. She knelt down a tramp, but she stood up a lady. God didn't throw the clay away. He pursues us with an unconditional love today. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father.